little departure today because, well, up here in Canada, or is it called it the Great White North, it's minus 15 degrees Celsius. It's freaking cold on the cold scale. It's one above zero Kelvin, I think. Or maybe not. Anyway, it's too stupid cold to paint. Paint will take forever to cure. So my pad, which does have primer on it, and that's, uh, you know, that's where we're at right now, it's going to be a couple days less warm enough to start painting it again. So I thought I'd break it a project I want to do for a while. And uh, in between showing that off, I, I've had questions about my resin smoothing technique, so I'm going to show you by working on a visor. Greetings, Dave here, DCPFX, a little different. We're in the office today. This isn't a weird backdrop. This is actually my office. This is, I, uh, I fix computers. This is a section I have off in the corner where I do all of my, my resin stuff. I have my resin printer in a box over there that you can't see. And then I have my dirt cheap homemade resin curing station. Like this. So here we have a 405 nanometer light. And easy to do is cut the hole and we're all set. This, uh, it comes like this, it just hangs there. And I do need to replace the tin foil a little bit along the top. It's just some scratching on the mirrors. And inside, this is a Lowe's set of mirrors. And no, there are not 12 spinning turntables. There's one, but that's the beauty of mirrors. They're dirt cheap, duct taped together. So I've used five of the six. The other one I have at home for my other printer. I have a CR10S, which I use a mirror on. And then this uh, in the middle here is just a, what they call a jewelry display. It works solar powered. So there's no batteries in it. Just as the light's on, it spins. And because the plate is clear, the um, UV light hops around and goes through and does everything it's got to do. So that is my bargain basement carrying station. So that to me is a, a real simple way of doing a resin curing station because it's cheap. Like you can buy the Anycubic resin, resin curing and wash station for what 150 us 200 canadian this was let's see the light was 10. i had the wood i have aluminum foil the mirrors were 20 i had duct tape and seven on the spindle the jewelry thing so what's that 30 bucks 40 bucks so for me that works and it works really well because with the um the, the 505, 405 nanometer light shining down, which is what you require in order to do uh, the, this resin. This is resin cures at 405 nanometers. It goes down and it hits every surface and goes around. And if you saw the turntable, the bottom is clear. So it goes down and up and around and things spin around. I did my clear bits for my pad. I put them down the one side because they're clear. So the UV went all the way through and they worked out really well. Uh, I haven't talked about this yet, but what I did is I reprinted the clear bits uh, for the LEDs on the pad. And I thought, you know what? I put on my thinking cap, got my calipers, measured exactly what they were, made them that size in the uh, slicing program, and then said, you know what? Flat to the bed. Now, for those who don't know how to resin print, well, you, the first couple layers you put really, really thick uh, well, not really thick, but really long, and become thick. They get uh, what they call elephant footed. So for me, that's perfect because they slide in. But because the elephant foot was on the bed, as I knocked them off, I still have that little lip. So it goes in and it goes just to the lip. It's perfect. I'll show you that soon. Anyway, so now here we are. Um, this looks okay. Uh, not great. Now this piece is underneath. So this goes. I need to actually stretch it a little bit. I don't want to resample it again and print it again because it's a three hour print. If I take a heat gun to this, expand out just a little bit, it'll be perfect. A tunable size, it'll be okay. Um, so this is great, but this part's going to be seen. So let's coat this with some resin. And I say coat this with resin, it's exactly what I'm doing. So I have resin left over from the bottle, I just have it a little in the cap. And I have this, so all I do, just paint it on. Now you want to be careful not to get any of this on your hands. Let me further a little bit here. Because this stuff is, you know, toxic. But I'm just going to hold it by here. Get this painted on here. And then uh, the last piece I'll just hold from here. So this just fills in the gaps. Gives you something to sand. So a little extra here on that little schmud is. And 
And you don't need to worry about being perfect on this because remember, you're gonna sand it down. So if you got some spots are higher than, than others, doesn't really matter. So I think that ought to do it. That's pretty well coated. And well, the rest I can get with paint and filler and everything else anyway. So I'm just gonna do that part of it. This part's gonna be, this part's inside. You won't see it. It's gonna be right up against my face. I won't see it at all either. And I'll get these outside pieces later when I get them all joined up. So now, what I do with this is cure it. Now this is gonna be, this is the better part of this rather than using XTC. Let me show you. Okay, so I've got this, uh, the bottom part here that I want to uh, basically be resined. So I painted on, took me 45 seconds. Like I say, you don't need to be perfect on it, it just needs to work. So all I do, this is just, this is bone symbol. I made this just the right size for this. And now, hit the power bar. Now you can't see it, well maybe you see a little bit here. There's UV light. Now with these, you gotta be careful because UV is bad for your eyes. That's why your sunglasses are rated UVA, UVB. So you don't wanna be staring at this. That's why I have the lid. And I covered the lid with aluminum foil because, well, that'll help reflect it. I could have used another mirror, but then cutting the glass, get the hole in, I didn't wanna go down that path. The light's going down and bouncing around. That's the important thing. Well, it's been about two minutes, I think. So let's pull it out. Okay, so now that is essentially cured. Now, uh, a little shine there. Now, because I put it on a little thick, what I'm gonna do is, and this is why I figured out just sort of trial and error. It's been cured on the outer layers, and I'm just gonna let it sit for a little bit, and then a uh, quick wash in isopropyl alcohol, and then back in the device uh, to cure up a little bit more, and then you're golden. Okay, so uh, here we are now, out of the second, uh, I guess, turn, in the curing station, uh, or I call it my curing station, the cure box. I will get some vinyl, cure box. Uh, now it's good to basically, now I can take uh, some sandpaper, let's take my, uh, my sander, a little uh, uh, hobby sander, which is great for this, and just touch it up a little bit, and then uh, it's so satisfying to watch this, because as you sand it, you get those those resin bits on the uh, on the sandpaper. So if you've ever sanded resin, you can just tell that it's coming, and it comes up so nicely, and then this will be nice and flat and smooth, and some primer, and then some gray, and then be all set. I'm printing the other half, and I've ordered up the brass tubes already from Home Depot. I should get those today. So I can have this done probably in less than a week. I don't see why not. And a little hit with a heat gun before I even paint it, just to make it fit my noggin a little bit better. And uh, then we'll be all set. Now, probably for most people, the stockpile is fine. I have a big head. I have an XXL motorcycle helmet. I have two of them. And I just need the bigger stuff because it's a bigger head. But uh, I made this 105% than the file. But Individual uh, mileage will vary. Best thing to do if you're gonna do this, if you have an FDM printer, you're gonna try this. Print and just let the first layer or two go down, peel it off and just see, so you don't waste a whole print on it. Just pull it up, oh, okay, uh, nope, bigger, bigger. And you know, as I showed you, this uh, does fit. It's just a little bit tight. But I make it just a little bit bigger here. And then what they did in TNG is they had a small string, just went and kept it in, uh, in Jordy's hair. You need to see it because black string, black hair. So I think I have to get a white string for mine. <laughs> so that is my uh, my video for today. I just wanted to show that off. And sometimes when you get into the middle of winter and you work outside doing it, you just have to throw your hands up and say, you know what, I'm going to do something else. Because even for this to paint it, I can, I've got a, a cardboard box. I have some, uh, some wire hanging down. I can just suspend it, paint it, bring it inside, let it cure, so it doesn't have to go out minus 20 degrees and try and cure in that where it's not going to. So that's it for today. Um, thanks all for dropping in. Thanks for the new subscribers. I had fun interaction on Star Trek Prop Enthusiasts. Like, hey, I'm gonna subscribe. I said, well, there's 125 more. Holy crap, where have you been? It's only been a year. Welcome. So I'm adding more people all the time. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, so, I'm a third of the way to where I wanna be, because I wanna be to 1,000, and I'm at 330, so 333 is a third to 1,000. I'm just getting so close. But hey, I'm loving doing this, so if I don't get the subscribers anyway, I'm still having fun doing it. So there you go. So I'll talk to you all later.